Hi, Jeff Simon here for Social Flight. Now before we get started with the next stage of our Titan T51D Mustang build, I want to talk about a really important subject, and that is fuel tank venting. This is important to both experimental aircraft and certified aircraft, and something that both pilots, mechanics, owners and builders all need to be aware of. Fuel starvation is one of the top reasons that aircraft accidents happen. And it isn't always just due to pilot error on selecting the right tank or, land, or running out of gas while you're flying. Fuel starvation can happen not just because there isn't enough fuel to get to the engine, but also because there isn't a way for that fuel to get to the engine if it's blocked by the vacuum of not having proper fuel venting. Now, it's very important during a pre-flight of any aircraft that you go and check out all of your fuel vents and make sure that there aren't mud daubers or any other foreign material that's blocking it, and they really should be checked on a regular basis in addition to your pre-flight to make sure that they also can't siphon fuel out and that the entire system is clear and working properly. I have personally seen the effects of blocked fuel vents and with the damage it can cause to an engine. I've seen it in sealed tanks that are actually in wet wings where the structure of the wing of the aircraft is actually sucked down by the power of the uh, fuel pump to the point that it damages uh, the structure of the wing and actually puts your uh, integrity of the wing in jeopardy due to those damages. In addition to that, um, it can, in some cases, won't even be noticed until you reach that critical point when you're flying. The engine uh, fuel pump of an aircraft is very um, uh, powerful. It has the ability of drawing against a pretty strong vacuum, but when it reaches its limit, it then ends very abruptly. You will then run out of fuel or access to fuel, and it can result in an off-field landing, accidents, and uh, many, many bad things come of all of that. And so I just want to stress that whether it is the maintenance the pre-flight or the design of your experimental aircraft system, the fuel venting is incredibly important. And that's what we're going to talk about in this episode of our Titan T-51D Mustang build. Before we can put the turtle deck on and finally close out the top of the tail section of our T-51D Mustang, we need to do one other thing, and that is we need to set up the fuel venting system for our 13-gallon fuselage tank. This is an auxiliary tank that is an option on the Mustangs. We're using it so that we can add some range to the aircraft, and basically it's like a reserve tank. So we fill it up. We leave it there, it has a, a separate plumbing system and a valve that'll actually pump it to refill the rest of the aircraft after the main tanks burn down some. And so of course in any tank, you need to have the feed which is at the bottom and then you also need to be able to vent it. So we're putting in fairly large uh, venting, rigid tubing uh, from here and then routing it down and out the belly of the aircraft. The reason we're doing that is because we know that once this uh, metal turtle deck is glued and riveted into place, we're not gonna be able to get back in here at least not very easily. And so I want to get all of this set and secured and basically be as permanent as possible, give us as many options as possible in the future. So in order to do that, we're going to uh, uh, take the uh, fitting that's uh, on here that I've just temporarily squeezed on, we're gonna uh, turned on. We're gonna sit here and, and uh, work on that. And then we're gonna take this tubing and uh, we're gonna actually bend it and get it fitted and secure it all the way through the uh, bulkhead uh, that goes down for the air cooling duct and then through the fiberglass belly. So let's get to work. Let's start with the fitting. Uh, now these fittings, the one that I'm going to use on this, starts with a quarter inch MIP, which is the same as uh, NPT, which is National Pipe Thread. So one end is the pipe thread fitting. That's going to go into what's called the bung, the port uh, at the top and the vent in the tank. And the other end of this is an AN6. That's a fitting that's used for actually attaching to hard lines or can also be to a flexible line. And so we'll show the assembly of that afterwards. Now, any time that you are assembling a pipe thread, you need to use lubricant. In this case, I'm going to use this fuel lube. It's uh, not, something that does not dissolve with fuel. Uh, this is uh, easy turn lubricant, fuel resistant. 
uh, basically fuel loop and uh, does a good job of solving that. Now it's critical that any time that you are using a pipe thread, you use it with lubricant. Ask me how I know that. Well, I know that because I have screwed up in the past uh, when I had forgotten that you had to do that. And if you tighten a pipe thread, especially going into aluminum, um, and then you go to back it off, you will strip the threads back off. They will bind and uh, you'll mess up your threads. You'll mess up both ends of that. And so very important to do that. And all you do is uh, take some of this. Now this is the goopiest stuff you will ever do. And it is not fun to clean up because again, fuel, it, it's not a, um, uh, fuel won't uh, uh, dissolve it. And so you just put it on, skip the first uh, couple threads just so that the part that gets in too much doesn't, um, you don't want to get this uh, gum up anything or get anywhere near the opening. But just a little coating on that should be fine um, so that it actually can lubricate it. And then we're just going to go over to the fitting itself. Now in this case, let's see, we got to about there. So by hand, I'm able to get it to right about that type of a, of a position. And then from that point, we use a, in this case, a 9 16 that we can put on here and turn it, which is just like that. So that is now all set, perfectly set up. All right, now I can actually go and start forming the tube and the tubing to actually go where I need it to go. Um, and so the best way to do that is uh, first to straighten it out, cut, get my lines uh, set up for the length that I'm going to actually need, and then actually feed up and then bend it to where I need it to go. I'm gonna actually then be securing it here so it has some support going down there. And the most important thing that we have it round it out uh, so that um, as a vent so that it's it's as high as possible in its routing so let me get started with that okay since I want to actually uh, finish at the top I need to actually get the length that I want going down first the first thing I need to do is actually drill a hole here through what is the top of the cooling duct and I'll show you in the area I'm going to drill it's right down in this corner and um, I'm gonna first put in a hole down here and then route the uh, route the pipe so I need a 5 8 inch uh, I'm using a step drill I need a 5 8 inch hole to make that happen so I'm going to go in here now I'm going to put this grommet in Okay, that was a little awkward on camera, but in reality, it was actually pretty straightforward. So uh, now we're gonna take this tube. Now, this is 3003 Versa tube. Um, it's uh, 3 8 inch, and it's pretty easy to move. You just need to make, be very careful. Now, if you're doing very gradual bends with this, you can actually just bend it by hand. Uh, but anytime that you need to do anything uh, that's gonna be even remotely tight, uh, you really don't want to get a kink in it of any kind. And so for that, we're actually going to go and use this pipe bender. That's how you get actual careful bends. But for the first part of this, we're actually just straightening this and using it basically straight. And so in order to do that, we're just going to just going to go gently, gently, gently and carefully by hand and start straightening this out in a way that would make sense by hand. So, and you can actually do that against something too. I can go and just uh, take this uh, straight edge and I can just start bending it into place against the straight edge. And that's a nice way to wind up with a straight tube. So, what I'm going to do is feed this down. Ooh, I'm gonna hit the ceiling and then feed this down. So, I am now gonna go down and go through the grommet that we installed. So I can actually see through the belly skin here and I can actually see where this is going to go. All right, now I don't actually want to see it too much, uh, the vent line when it's coming down. So even though it's coming down to like about here, I'm actually going to bring it out a little bit more on the on the belly area down here. That way I don't have to um, 
you know see it as much I'll bring it down in here and that's where we're actually bring it to come uh, to come out so it's not quite quite as visible so there's my hole and now I got to put I have to put the uh, grommet in place Okay, the grommet's in place. Now I need to kind of work my way through the belly in order to push it through. Okay, back here up top now, uh, this section, uh, I want to do two things. I've got it run longer than I need down at the bottom. Uh, uh, which is perfect and now I need to secure it and I'm going to secure it in multiple places using these uh, 8L clamps um, and uh, normally you when you use an 8L clamp you use it with uh, a screw and a nut uh, going through it to secure it in this particular case again this area is not going to be accessible after I get that in there and so therefore in this case just for this area I'm actually going to do it with a large a very large uh, rivet and that's what I'm going to do to actually secure the 8L clamp. After that, we're going to route this through, but we're going to make sure that this fits um, uh, from after where the clamp will go in over here and then so that it's properly sized going right up to the fitting. And for that, I will probably actually use the uh, tube bender in order to make sure that I'm getting a really uh, a good careful bend going into that. And uh, to cut it, let me grab my, we just use a normal a cutter like you would use on copper pipe in your house and uh, that should be enough to, to get it and then I'll teach you about how we flare it and get it all to fit at the at the last step so um, let's uh, let's get that part done you can see what I've done is I brought it up over here this is the fuel filler this is where from the outside of the airplane Let me back this off a little bit um, if you look here on the outside, this is actually where the fuel is going to get filled. So I really want to keep this as high as possible because you're going to see the fuel as you put it in here. You're going to see the level till you top it off. That'll be topped off here, basically here. And I uh, want to make sure that the vent is as much as on, uh, ahead of that or on top of that as possible. Our excess tubing out. All right, so our tube is cut off. And we're all set to uh, fit it. Now, the way that these AN fittings work is you have this um, regular threaded end. With you can see, it's got a bevel on the end of that, and this is the part that has to uh, get installed on uh, the hard line. This consists of two different parts. There is a collar that you can see, this small collar that actually we have to slide over the pipe. And then this is the nut or B nut that goes over it. And so we have to install these first. And that's a really important one because this will catch a lot of people. It's caught me many times. You have to install this first and then you can actually go and uh, put on the flare. Once you have the flare at the end, that's what actually meets the, the uh, end, the beveled end of the AN fitting and it'll all assemble back together. So. Now, the first thing that we need to do is actually prepare the line, the actual uh, uh, aluminum tubing. And uh, so I've gone and clean up, cleaned up the inside of it, but if you're going to flare anything, um, it's very important that the outside be absolutely perfectly smooth and free of burrs. Otherwise, that's going to crack when you go and spread the pipe. So I'm going to take this here and just very carefully run my file across it. Okay, now that I've got the edge perfectly uh, perpendicular, perfectly smooth, I'm now going to go and just clean it up nicely with a little bit of Scotch-Brite. Now, as I mentioned, we got to put these into place first. So, first goes on our nut, and then here is our collar. Okay, We've got the uh, bee nut and the collar in place. Now it's time to use this tool. This is a Parker flaring tool. Um, it's actually kind of an expensive tool, but it's nice because what it does is it actually 
you set the dies, these are 3 8 inch tubing dies, you clamp this down on the tube, it actually has a little gauge that measures how far to put the tube through, and then uh, you crank on this, and this very gently will then open it, you just do it till it stops, you pretty much get a perfect flare every time. So this isn't, uh, let's see if we can, uh, if I can show you putting this flaring on this. Nice flared fitting now. This can come down, will fit right in, right nicely into that. Um, and then I can do the fitting. So what I'm gonna do, back this off a little bit. I'm gonna go to the other side, grab the nut, bring it up, get this attached, and then do the rest of the shaping of the tube. this. It doesn't need much force on it at all, especially since this is a vent. But either way, you, you should fit fitting, you should uh, fit your fittings the same way, regardless of how you plan on using them. Whether it's fuel flowing through it, a vent, assume it's going to be fuel. This is where this is going to go on. So I can that in see how that's gonna fit that looks good got the line pretty much where I want it that will work quite well all right last step is down here We're gonna get this to be just about an inch you can always cut it down a little shorter later but at most uh, an inch there and then I have to bevel the forward side 45 degrees. Reason for that is it's really important that it gets positive air pressure, not negative air pressure as the air goes back here where it would pull fuel out of the system. So I'm just going to go and put this guy, my cutter, on here and move it up to right about where I want the bottom of that vent line to be almost just taking up the slack you're not putting pressure on it when you do that you just want to take up the slack that it makes as it goes around the tube and then eventually after a few terms boom tube just comes off there you go get that part done and then we can begin cutting that 45 and I'm just going to do that by literally shaving it away. In fact, I'm going to change my position so I can do it a little easier. Do this one. It's very soft, so it's actually pretty easy. Alright, so that's it. We are now done with the fuel venting system for our 13 gallon auxiliary fuel tank that goes in the fuselage for our Titan T51D Mustang. And now that all of this can be sealed up, it's going to be time next to finally glue on the turtle deck. When the turtle deck's glued on, we can just keep moving forward with different pieces and uh, eventually we'll be ready to completely skin our Titan Mustang. Until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight. Be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free Social Flight mobile apps for Apple and Android devices. We have tens of thousands of aviation events and destinations. We have prize giveaways in our Fly to Win Challenge. And of course, every Tuesday night, it is Social Flight Live. Just go to socialflightlive.com and see some of our fantastic guests that we have. Again, thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe and uh, like, send us your comments. Until next time, I wish you all blue skies.